Masks no more. Janice McGeehan making waves in her very short time as acting governor today, signing an executive order that basically bans all public bodies under the state umbrella, including public schools from requiring masks. She gained the acting title while Governor Brad Little was out of town for a governor's conference in Tennessee. His office says this move came as a surprise. In the meantime, it caused school districts, cities and others around the state to evaluate their current mask policies and now question how to move forward. Our Tristan Lewis joins us live to help us break down what this executive order signed today means. Tristan, tell us. Mark, people probably have two questions when it comes to McGeehan's executive order that went into effect at 11 a.m. today. One being, what kind of authority does the lieutenant governor have to issue an executive order? And the other one, what do entities have to do about it? As Governor Brad Little left the state for a Republican Governors Association conference in Nashville, Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan, serving as acting governor, wasted no time issuing an executive order. That order no longer allowing certain entities in the state to mandate face coverings. It's just difficult for me to go around the state and talk to people that are still being forced to wear these masks and do different things. Under Article 4, Section 12 of the Idaho Constitution, in case the governor is absent from the state, the lieutenant governor automatically becomes acting governor, which means they have all of the powers for that office. The lieutenant governor does have the authority to issue an executive order. While law professor Shakira Sanders says that's clear, she thinks the order is very confusing for the entities and impacts. Local governments, health districts, public schools, and more all have legal obligations to protect people in their jurisdiction. This ruling is raising a lot of questions and possibly legal challenges. Uh, the obvious option is to go to court. Uh, but if the governor is coming back today and decides to rescind the order, then it's very well may be that one, you're not going to have time to file that lawsuit. School districts across the state like West Ada and Boise are consulting legal counsel regarding their school board's authority to enforce certain health and safety protocols. Could be that many uh, cities are saying, hey, we're going to do what we think is best. If the lieutenant governor wants to enforce this, then enforce it and we'll see you in court. Sanders says there is a lot that remains unclear, which is why it leaves different interpretations up to each entity. The city of Boise, which no longer has a mask mandate, does ask people to wear face coverings in city facilities. Under their interpretation, they will continue asking people to do so. If an individual goes to a government facility or uh, any of the places that are subject to this executive order and they say they don't want to wear a mask, it is not quite clear whether those individuals will be able to say, well, hey, here's this executive order saying I don't have to wear a mask and that you can't impose that on me. Sanders says for entities to decide whether or not to enforce the executive order really just comes down to whether or not they want to go to court. And according to Brad Little's office, he is supposed to be back in Idaho tonight, and it is unclear if he will make any changes. Mark. Tristan Lewis for us tonight. Tristan, thanks. And this raised questions beyond the legality of the order. The big reason why Governor Little has never imposed a statewide mask mandate. His main talking point has always been that these decisions should be made by local governments and school districts. McGeehan, who prides herself, of course, as an ultra conservative, felt that today's executive action was necessary and needed, especially when factoring in that a bill with similar goals earlier this year failed in the leg legislature. But the disconnect between the state's two highest ranking officers, which has been well documented,